RPG! My 12! Second floor! Stay away from the floor! Welcome to Bash, everyone. This is Jock of BashandSlash.com. Today, we continue our series of casts highlighting the staff working on Battlefield 3. Today, we have the prolific audio director, Stefan Strandberg. Welcome to another special edition of Bash. This is Jock of BashandSlash.com, and today, we again focus on the folks who bring you Battlefield. The latest incarnation of this franchise, Battlefield 3, will be coming at us in late fall of this year. It's currently being feverishly worked on in Stockholm, Sweden, by its developers, DICE. And we have a member of that team from DICE here with us. Let's get to that guest right away. As someone who really appreciates uh, the creative arts behind sound design, I have to say I'm very excited to talk to this gentleman. I, I remember wanting to speak to him after only 10 seconds of listening to Battlefield Bad Company 2. Yes, I said listening, not seeing. Though the game looked great, it sounded even better. The team that built that soundscape in BFBC2 went on to win a raft of awards. The 2010 BAFTA, GameSpot's Best Sound Design Award, the Game Audio Network Guild Award for Sound Design. And now, here is that team's audio director, Stefan Strandberg. Oh my god, what an introduction. That was yeah. awesome. <laughs> The, I, um, was that me you were talking the, about? The, the trumpets <laughs> and the timpanis couldn't make it into the studio. But I have to tell you, I mean, that introduction into Battlefield, uh, Bad Company 2, I remember to this day, and if you read posts and f forum posts of people, you know, remembering, you know, rec recollecting playing that game, almost yeah. everyone will tell you the same thing. The sound just blew, blew everybody away. I'm, I'm so honored to, to have uh, a chance to talk to you. Oh, I'm honored to be here. And uh, it's so funny you should mention forums and stuff like that. And just talking out to the community is something we really appreciate uh, them being so vocal about these things. And uh, so I've, I've, see, I've seen and I've been blessed by, by a lot of uh, those guys out there, uh, all the gamers just enjoying sound and just saying it out loud on forums it, it it's you know it's nice to have it in reviews and getting prizes and stuff but just reading forums sometimes almost all of them are negative in many ways like there's always this ne negative vibe on forums with people complaining about different aspects of different games whatever it might be so but it was it's so funny with with the sound for bad company 2 that it was so appreciated. It was hard to find people who dislike anything <laughs> with it. I think it, there's a, there is something extremely powerful with sound, and I think we got something really right in that game. So we're proud of it. And uh, so it's funny to speak to you, and i um, honored to be here. You know, it's uh, sound in movies and in games. Sometimes it gets overlooked. If it's done right, it feels so natural you don't even notice it. Yeah, and I want to tie into what you just said there, because that's also a philosophy in itself. The thing, if it's done right, you don't notice it, and that's what you said. Right. And, but, then there, but then there might be key moments in a game where you're interactive with the game, where, where there actually was something awesome happening and it was the sound that amplified that specific event or to get to the point where we're happy so you have to we have to take a couple of steps back and then so we analyze a lot in the beginning in initial stages of of uh, making sounds we try not to over construct 90 percent i would say of making a game or audio for a game is just getting all of those expected sounds to be there like the the player expects when he does, when he or she does this, he want, uh, she, he or she expects this sound to be there. And I think we, um, we, we had just as a ba basic foundation, we had a very good foundation of just natural sounds in there. And when you have that layer, that's when you can start painting with the cooler colors, so to speak. Like, uh, and that's so we had, you know, we had the original game as a foundation, Battlefield Bad Company One which was a lot of trial and error and, and everything else stuff. And then moving on to the second one, we actually had a game already there. So we c polish is something not to be underestimated in, in terms of game development. Like if you have time, which we did have for Bad Company 2, we were really, really eager to, to just use that time in the best possible way. And then 
we started analytically analytically just uh, providing all the sounds into the engine and and you know going out recording a lot and but never forgetting about what it is that actually plays back that and also embracing fact that that uh, sounds are everywhere and we, we we started to dilute a lot of our old sayings and old uh, you know you when you your sound group you you get your own rule sets together with this group and and then after a couple of years you you need to rewrite your rules and so well, that let, happens let me, every time we let, let me explore where those rules came from i mean I, i've i've heard on a few occasions i i've heard you say in interviews that there are three prerequisites for someone wanting to work in your field uh, imagination, oh, yeah. uh, imagination, imagination, passion, and analytical skill. I, I wanted to explore oh, those yeah. traits for a second because you clearly demonstrate them. Uh, how did you get a passion for sound design? Where, where did, where, where did the, the, the passion for sound come from? Hmm, uh, the passion, I think that's a passion towards games in general. Like, I, we're, I'm passionate about the products that we make, so I think you have to, I have to like the game I'm working on. If I like it, I don't even notice that I work on it. It's right. like I'm just, uh, I'm just there and I, I'm, I, everything that I do on a, on a, I just breathe and eat the game that I'm working on. If I like the product, then I've been fortunate to be on, uh, working on, on those games here at DICE. Like from the very first game I did here at DICE was Rally Sport Challenge 2. I was, I was, I was so into cars back then. I didn't. I and initially I wasn't. But if you can ignite that spark in someone, it doesn't. It actually didn't really matter what discipline I was working in. But I, I really, I really, I was really challenged by just engines back then. And that I was passionate about engines, and uh, I needed to make that game. Was uh, that about eight? Was that about eight years ago? Or so? Yeah. Was that about eight years. Okay. Cool, but but you're also you're, you're also a musician, right? You, you, do, you, do you need to have a musician's ear to be good at what you do? Not necessarily, but there is. It helps. I think um, there is a lot of editing made where timing is something that I'm, 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 I'm more to this day more and more believe that timing is a bigger thing than I initially thought, as in rhythmic perception both when it comes to sound but also to game pacing when making narratives and stuff like that that i think that that's where sound designers are actually better than many game designers or because they hear an event in a certain pace so they can block out a certain moment in a game with just audio because they hear oh he runs out of this cliff he jumps and then he pulls his parachute cord and then he shoots the gun and then he lands and you know there's there's rhythm rhythm in how you would make a sound for a moment like that and if you start with the sound you can actually get a better just you know be, you as a human being you're you're sensitive to stuff when it's not, not rhythmic i'm not saying that uh, games are a beat like a, a techno song but there's something to rhythmic composition that is easier for for sound designers to relate to than for people not working in this field. So we are trying here more collaborative work now, where where it's uh, we the sound designers are working with the mission designers in creating certain moments in the game, with sound being the leading discipline uh, for just on the sketch phase. Uh, how, how do you learn? How do you go to learn to create soundscapes? I mean, how did you learn this craft? Was it on the job, or do you, do you did you take uh, training? Or? I'm actually I'm a self-taught person, and so I would I think that's uh, one of the big benefits actually, because I was never bogged down with technical. I've always been, you know, my tools have been have been quite simple, and I don't, as I said, I don't believe in. Uh, crafting too much or constructing too much which which i think is a common misconception as well that sound designers as uh, they manipulate sounds no that's wrong no we or i don't do that at least that much 
I could probably benefit from doing that more, but I'm not doing that as much as I think people think. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more into getting it the right sounds rather than so as, and then specifically getting the right sounds to play back at the right time. Right. That makes sense. And, right, right. Uh, and getting collecting, it, that's uh, I've mentioned this before as well. It's not it, that's just one part of it, of course. Getting the right sound. But and we're good at that, I think. We're we're really we're really careful when it comes to the craft. And but your initial question was about how did I learn? I don't know. I I maybe for me it's about trusting what I believe that I like. That yeah. is my skill. I don't know. Um, so I mean, learning the tools that that's not very hard. But I think on a daily basis there are several things you can be good at. You know, I'm I'm working with people. So that's one thing, a people skill, that's really important. And then there is the craft skill, also important. How important is the technical side of it? I mean, it, 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 to me, it, you know, especially now in the digital age, you know, yeah. being an audiophile or working in audio just must seem like a, a incredibly daunting because of all the technical uh, things that you need it to... Is, yeah, I think every time I meet people in the movie industry or like people working with film, they get, they get uh, completely baffled, or uh, <laughs> when they see how complex it is, because it's not about track laying like a, a movie with a linear soundscape. So it's, it's, so it's more like building buckets of sounds that work together. Uh, and then there are there are of course places in a game which are similar to movies in terms of how they're made and played back, but. Right. Uh, for a battlefield game, it's more about providing the game with the components. So, and then the then the monster lives by itself. You know, the the battlefield is played back. the The sounds are generated by players. We're talking multiplayer. So there's a soundscape that I we we can't control, but we can uh, in a way. But we provide just we provide the building blocks, and that's where I think we've been successful in in being extremely um, balanced and um, and real and uh, well, we're, we're gonna get to those and, those di and a deep we've been deep like there's a deep layer of of recognition and believability in our sound right That's, uh, I, I'm gonna get to that believability because I I wanted to get back to BFBC2 for a second I remember I wasn't kidding when I said I wanted to, to, to talk to you because I because I, I remember getting into that game in multiplayer spawning um, I remember facing an open field you know nothing special uh, the graphics were okay then I heard gunshots and a tank salvo and I swear to God my jaw dropped uh, it was like I was walking around with earplugs all my life and finally someone removed them you know what I mean <laughs> like the sound was just so right. breathtaking what and this mm -hmm. is like my my question isn't very um, specific, so I, I don't know what kind of answer I'm going to get. But what what set the sound in BFBC2 apart from games, you know, of similar genre, you know, in in that era? Like like remember you you, you I mean you, you had other games out there like Call of Duty. There's, there's all all these different games out there, but BFBC2 was completely set apart from those games. It was at such a high level. Was it was it fi greater fidelity? What is it? What is it that you brought to that game that made it just sound that great? Again, uh, there's so many answers to that question. Um, first of all, th we had great source. We all of our recordings and ma the material we had to work with was amazing. But again, that's nothing that sets us apart. That there are many studios that go out and record. So it's about how they're played back. But I think the deepest message or the deepest uh, core of, of um, separation from other games is still in the philosophy that we have about building audio worlds, like believable audio worlds, and allowing you know, the war to really resonate inside the world that you're playing in. Like if you're out there on the, on the battlefield and uh, we let the, the guns and the explosions echo and we allow stuff to be big, not necessarily big in each individual component, but the, the whole soup is awesome when, when it's together. So I'm really frustrated sometimes when I, when I hear the single components, the building blocks of the game, because they are not that amazing. I, I tell you this, 
uh, for real. They're not that amazing, but they're balanced together with all the other components. And I think there's a common mistake in sound design is that you approach each individual building block like, mm, I'm going to create this awesome explosion here. Or, and, and then you go on and creating an awesome explosion, and then you go on to create an awesome gun, but you never balance them with each other. But that's what we did with almost every single component. So, because otherwise we would dilute ourselves in portraying power. So, like, if you make the biggest gun, the handgun, to be big, as big as you would have wanted it to be in by itself, you would then dilute the power of, of the tank gun. So we balance all the things to be, this has to be the biggest and this is the smallest, but we still, they still couldn't be pea shooters, so they still need to be powerful with, within that world but i think we're just keeping uh, consistency towards that uh, what is a great achievement for us but i think a common misconception is that people think that you make awesome individual sounds but that's not the case for us is what it's to make the whole that was the that was the challenge and that's what i think we we really delivered on as well so well, i think and that's what the players hear it's like they hear everything and uh, and the, I mean, there are, there are several different answers to this. I could go on taking a completely different angle on this question, but uh, that's one takeaway that I would like for people to be aware of, that it's a decision that we took, that we are not making each individual component awesome, even though they are, some of them, by themselves, they're all balanced towards uh, each other. Because in sound, everything is relative. Like, there's, everything is relative to, to, to the other sound. Like, that's like music, and that's like harmonies. I, I, imagine, imagine you had, like, a bathtub with water in it, and there was a sound. In other words, let's say, for example, I dropped a stone in the bathtub, and it makes waves. In, 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 I'm imagining the game like that. If you drop a, a stone or a pebble in the, in the water, it would make a wave. In many games, the, the, there's a few waves, and then they stop. In your game, it's almost like all the waves hit the sides of the bathtub and, and reflect back. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like there's mm -hmm. this wash, and, and mm -hmm. you, you don't see that in a lot of games. It take, must take a tremendous amount of computing power to keep all those waves going. <laughs> I guess it's yeah. I mean, there's we 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 have uh, some really good uh, solutions there, technical solutions. So of course, I really have to give some credit to 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 our engineers and the backbone of the Frostbite engine. Yes, there is a lot of computing power going on, but it, and there are several several things that provides the listener with uh, the experience. So it's not only the source. Then it's the HDR and mixing and then it's the our master unit with which uh, has a different compression setting makes that makes you hear the stuff uh, at all times but i can go into that later no, but in terms of shooting power and echoes i think a lot of games and there's been a lot of talk about this when, especially when making shooters is that people a lot of sound designers they concentrate on on the actual bang and they know there's a tail when you fire a gun in a certain environment there's a tail and in a recording usually the tail is extremely low like it's it's minus 30 decibels from the actual bang because the bang is so loud but what we've done is tilted that balance a lot so the reflection in our game is, is, is played back much louder than in many other games and I think that also sets us apart because here's the thing you you play back a war game a shooter and by nature a bang is a really loud thing so and we said but if you only play back the bang you still play it at comfortable levels you play it on a tv or you don't play it as loud as it is in real life that would be extremely horrible <laughs> yeah. to play it yeah. that so what we did instead is amplify the tail because that's something you can experience because and it's also softer on the ear and it and it's longer so it's ah. the player can hear it really hear it so if you fire in a forest in bad company 2 you, you the the reflection of the forest is quite loud in comparison to the shot as well right. or they're 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 balanced out especially compared to other games which i think play them back at you know, minus 20, and there's an ambient playing, and there's a lot of other sounds, so usually the tails, they just drown. They drown. By, but our tails are really loud, and I think that's what 
it makes the game convincing even if you play it at lower amplitude. You just explained so something. You yeah, you just explained yeah. something to me because when I'm in I'm in a uh, battlefield, uh, Bad Company 2, I, I fire a very powerful gun. Just as in real life, it'll take a little while for my hearing to readjust. It, it takes yes. you know it's such a shock on your ears. It my my yeah. my ears would take a little while to to start being able to pick up the the very light sounds around mm. me. That happens in this mm. game, and this is what freaks me out because it's so realistic. And that's be and I think mm. it's because of what you just said. It, you're playing back the tales so loudly. I still can't hear mm. you know <laughs> my footsteps or something. You know. Uh, we, so we exaggerated that a lot, and I think uh, if you go indoor, there's a reverb indoor, and it, it's. It's extremely exaggerated. It, I think we actually played it a little bit too loud. But then we noticed that when you play it back on lower volumes, you still want to hear that you're indoor. And we were like, let's not fiddle with, you know, fine-tuned, calibrated right. reverbs. Let's just really say to the player, you're indoor. It's this loud. Like, it echoes really right. loud. It's super exaggerated. But it's, it's saying you're inside. No, it, it works. Instantly. Yeah, it, yeah. it works. I mean, I... What, what a difference, in, you know, in the old days of video gaming, I remember how simple things were. You know, you had looped, uh, pre-recorded samples uh, playing mm -hmm. every time there was a need for a sound effect. Uh, you know, the game soundtrack was recorded usually uh, using a 16-voice polyphonic synthesizer back in the 80s. I remember that on my sound card, <laughs> you know. Uh, th yeah. There's a huge difference, I guess, between those days and today's approach. Y you still mm -hmm. play back authentic sounds i imagine you record them but on the pc platform like how do those sounds get recorded are they are you recording them in as waves are you recording them as as, as pulse coded modulated sounds i mean how do, how do you record them or what what is a native sound we, we record we use different uh we use different recording equipment and different for different types of content and we use uh sometimes it's sometimes it's uh you know simple recorders and but we, I mean, we try to record in as high resolution as possible. But one of the key things that we we do is also use pretty dirty material. Like we use we use high definition, special, low frequency content for your LFE and stuff like that, which is really intelligent but designed. But we also use like really dirty video camera noises a lot of the times. Really. So and that that's. Like we, we, we like high fidelity, we like high fidelity people who invest in, in high fidelity equipment, but we also embrace the fact that most people don't. Like mo there is of course a, uh, an upgrade in people's uh, technology at home, but still many people just play them back on a, on a, a Samsung television or... Uh, and then how do you make your war sound convincing there? And we noticed that using video camera as an analogy for for what penetrates the speaker is is a better way of looking at it than thinking that it's going to be played back, back in a thx certified cinema because that's never going to happen so when we've tilted the game i would say our game sounds awesome in a crappy <laughs> in a crap on a crap tv uh, it also sounds awesome in a in a high definition super hundred thousand dollar setup of course we we work in those studios but we don't fool ourselves and say this is how most pe people are going to experience it because it's not and that's so when you said are we record the source yes a lot of it is nicely recorded balanced but a lot of it is also very very just recorded from the hip and a lot of those recordings i cherish the most the things that i just was very uh, how do you say unscientific about recording i was just in it uh like these when we were at these big military exercises here in sweden a lot of the times it's it's the crappiest recorder recording the most violent thing that makes it to the game not the stationary microphone that was balanced nicely it was uh, it's the unexpected sounds from the from the crappiest recorders that still surprises me the most and that sounds more authentic to what I think people see today from from conflicts all over the world. I, I saw that, that you were at that, at that there was, a, was it a, a Swedish uh, military war game? I'm not sure if that was part of uh, one of the NATO exercises that happens in southern Sweden. This was, this was in 2010 that you went? Yes. 
in 2010, yeah. yeah. So it was probably joint action or one of those things that they have in southern uh, Sweden every year. But uh, uh, you, you took place, uh, you, you took part in that uh, in that exercise, and I think I saw a video of you uh, crouched mm -hmm. um, at an intersection somewhere, <laughs> waiting for a for an ambush or something. Um, what what were you trying to accomplish there? Were you trying to record individual sounds, or were you just trying to figure out you know how these sounds worked? you know, in the environment? What were, what were you trying to ac accomplish? Uh, the latter there, I would say. I mean, we, it's easy for us to go out and record a proper gun stationary with scientific, you know, a scientific approach where we just want uh, the perfect foundation for a gun. And we've done that several times. That's easy, I would say. Or not right. easy, not un don't underestimate. That's a craft in itself. But y I always get more the value or bang for the buck when recording the real thing like the, w uh, when you're in as, I mean this is as close as you can get to being in a real conflict without being killed uh, being in those big military exercises we are there as civilians and we are we're carrying you know mobile recorders with us and then we have some stationary setups and we try to position ourselves uh, differently all of us like in different positions and then just uh, uh, try to both be as close as possible or as far away as possible but what we what we accomplish there is that is both being there like the, the thing we talk about when we go in the car back to the studio about what we experienced was that's one big takeaway for us right. that we can go like did you notice that when the tank was behind that building it i actually couldn't hear this this and this oh but did you hear that there was this thing happening when he shot over there and I was standing by that barrel over there. You know, you, there's, you share stories with each other in that car back home when you go back and you, and you re-evaluate and readjust your, your truths about sound. And then you listen to the recording and they, they might concur with what you just experienced or they might not. You know, they might be really weird. I'm like, what's this thing happening here? Oh, it's something bouncing off that wall over there. What was the biggest surprise and for you in this uh, in this exercise? Did you find something? Um, I mean, apart from being really scary, you're really you feel really small and intimidated when you're close to a 60-ton tank and these uh, angry men <laughs> <laughs> in, in military equipment shouting. Uh, I think one of the big it's like it's it's loud up close, but it's not it's not as loud a couple just a couple of meters away. You can actually take your earplugs off not that loud like it dies like gunfire travels a long way but it's it's it quickly becomes quite soft on the ear i would say which is a surprise to me i thought it was going to be since it's that loud and it really hurts your ear on the like 10 15 20 meters i don't know but then at 30 to 50 meters you can take off your earplugs and listen uh, and then i also noticed when someone is firing like when the when someone is firing away from you, like the sound pressure is actually traveling in the direction of the firing. So we notice that a lot of bass is actually disappearing when someone is not aiming at you. But when you're aimed at, there's a lot of bass pressure coming your way. I didn't think that the, the difference would be that big. That was one of the things we re-evaluated. I mean, that's a minor tweak. No one would probably notice that in the game. Unless it's you're being ever been sh unless you've ever yeah. been shot at in real life. <laughs> I yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, no. there. But I, I didn't. I didn't know that that the actual angle of the gun made and made that big of a difference. Uh, but we hadn't like an uh, you know fast firing MG MG3 firing away from us, and that was much thinner and I could just hear the high frequency content but uh, I couldn't hear the bassy bangs but then as I stood in front of it I could I didn't hear the high frequencies it was more of just the physical bangs hitting me so, and I mean I mean so that's the th there can be scientific truths but then you make a game and then you start noticing stuff like single player versus multiplayer for example in in multiplayer people f they fire, there is intelligence in how people fire because they are, are human beings. So when you hear someone firing in the multiplayer, it's a, it's a person trying to aim at another person. So there's intelligent, intelligence in the actual pattern. It, and that's subtle cues. You, you 
you might think, oh, it's just sound, but when you play single player, you immediately hear that that's not humans firing. Because we we fire at humans and then we reevaluate the position, we take a new tactic, whatever we adjust. Like, you fire at someone running into a house and then you might, you know, you fire at the window and mm, you don't see him anymore. So you, you, you move a little bit and then you see him in another window and then you fire there. I mean, that, so that's a little story there in the sound mm -hmm. and that's a pattern of firing that just happened but then in single player uh, we have AI which is extremely hard to do convincing like and getting those stories in there is extremely hard because you know how good it sounds in multiplayer so multiplayer in that sense will always sound better than single player in that particular aspect i mean in firing patterns because that's humans like and that's you can't like get that with ai you can get close but you can't get that that uh, exact uh, like those those mini narratives that are in there and that's why i also think you believe it when you hear it there in, in, in the rhythms, player. yeah, the like rhythms. It sounds real because someone is firing. Yeah, it's it, I, I, it's amazing you, uh, listening to you describe this because basically you're saying, you know, you, you're listening to the, the just close your eyes and listen to the multiplayer and you know it sounds different than an AI because in the in the multiplayer there's almost a rhythm, the rhythms and patterns indicate mm. intelligence. Uh, then again, if you ever watch me play, you're, you're not going to find too much intelligent, uh, <laughs> intelligence <laughs> in, the way, in the way I'm shooting a gun. So um, uh, I'm just going to take your word for it. So, so I guess what I'm, I'm hearing is that every, you know, every time I see a big budget game come out, invariably the sound department for the studio developing the game goes out and records new gun sounds. I al mm. I've always wondered why the hell that is necessary because, you, you know, like for the average person like myself who, who never fired a weapon and don't want to fire a weapon in real life you know i wouldn't even mm. notice the difference but you guys go no, no, no. do that Ex exactly and there and i mean there are more that unite them than that than separates them like a bang is a bang and most guns sound exactly the same like they do and uh, there's there are minor things that separate it's them. it's caliber which makes a bigger bang like a big caliber gun is a bigger bang and uh, the barrel length and and uh, then it's the fire rate that i mean those being if i'm being really crude uh, it's those things that separates the, the sounds and then you can put small iconic mechanical identities to each gun yes you can do that so that's where you can be a little bit creative and construct something or use the actual real source which we do a lot of the times but then sometimes that you that is not even enough you know, and then it's about what microphones you use you can get different there's no i've said this so many times there's no truth in audio like the uh, or, uh, and there is but there is only different ways of recording it like yeah. and and so yeah i think it's good for people look you think you might say why do people go out and record it it must be already be recorded but it's about going out and smelling it and being there and you know it's like if you're going to make a rally game i think it's a good thing for the team to go out driving a car so they have at least some perception of what it is that's important so if it's not that is one reason if not for any sound reason that would be a reason just to just go out and shoot like i also i think i'm really scared of guns myself but when when you it's still important for me as a designer to fire the gun and to be part be in the ball part of a of a big military exercise that's you, as you stick your head in there and you go oh it's not at all it's not at all what i thought it would it's not at all as I expected it to be. Oh, I thought the urban fighting was going to sound like the heat scene, but it doesn't. But so, so uh, you know, you, yeah. you can only people only relate to what they've seen in, in other media. So you better find out what the real deal is about, and then you can make your own. I would uh, I would urge people to do that. Like, make your own truth. Like it, with the. And it's interesting that you said that there is there is truth. And, and and not in in audio recording and, and I, I just bring back it brings back um, uh, the thought in me uh, listening to BFPC2 again I, if I remember there were five audio settings in BFPC2 all the way from small speakers mm -hmm. hi-fi home cinema headphones and I think something called war tapes and if you listen to it on as I usually do in headphones and then you mm -hmm. flip on war tapes 
which I, I, I have to th I have to ask you where you came up with the name, why you called it War Tapes, but what the heck was War Tapes? Because when I put that on, the aggressiveness of the sound, it just, it, it was a completely different experience. If I wanted to, if I wanted to play the game, you know, and try to, try to identify individual enemies or whatever, I would set it up on, on you know, headphones or, or, or home cinema uh, with a 5.1 surround, but War Tapes totally immersed me. What, what was, what was the difference between, let's say, going from headphones to war tapes? What was war tapes? Well, first of all, I want to answer that with an excuse to begin with. Like, how how not to do it? Like, we shipped the game with a setting that no one, that we didn't tell anybody about what it was. Yeah. Like, and then, uh, so, there was no explanatory text what it was. And that's really bad on our part, that we didn't explain that. And uh, it's, so, yes. But of course, in the context of different settings, we have uh, we have uh, just different. Uh, we have master a master unit, which of course is you set the dynamic range for. If you play the game loud at home in a home cinema, you put it on home cinema. The dynamic range is really big. Like you would then the, the then you have the biggest separation between the loudest sounds and the quietest sounds. Uh, but you still have the HDR, which is an active component in the software that would amplify softer sounds if there's nothing else going on. But home cinema is still like, that's the, if you play it back loud, that's where you should play it on. But, and then, if you go back to a more comfortable level, you should use the default setting, with, uh, which is a little bit more compressed. And then headphones, I think headphones is a little bit closer to home cinema but it's a little bit brighter and a little bit bassier I believe we did some EQ setting on that and then war tapes uh, a TV compressed and then war tapes is like the bastard child of the compression settings it's I mean it's a uh, we uh, again we were big fans of, of a lot of as I said dirty um, recordings and in trying to make the whole game sound like that, we said we, this is a really extreme setting, but it had something uh, really valuable. It's like a loudness bottom, basically, on a on a those 90s amplifiers. You, if you play the game at really low volumes, but you want to hear everything, then war tape is your setting. But more importantly, I think it's an aesthetic setting, so it, it shouldn't be on that axis at all. It should probably be separate button I think because it is an aesthetic setting that embraces or I would say translates the game into a sound of YouTubeism I would say like a uh, where everything is exaggerated like you feel like your ears are super sensitive to everything it doesn't matter if yes. it's uh, if it's loud sounds or if it's lower sound so it's, it's like the film grain button that they have in mass yeah. effect yeah. like on the picture quality it's like a it's a, it's a different way of uh, like pe some people don't like the film grain i don't know i yeah. think it's nice and then i think war tape is war tape is nice if you're in for a quick fix and you just want to play for 15 minutes or so but i think it for a longer session it would be fatiguing but it's it's nice to say i think I think it's fun. I think it's good that we actually shift with it because it's it's an it's an anomaly, but it's it shows like it shows that we could do stuff like that, and it's just there. Like the purpose of it being there is a little bit unclear to me, but it was so cool sounding that we couldn't shift without it. No, I'm, and glad, it was... I'm glad you let it in. I'm, I'm glad you left it in. To me, to me, it was it was very similar to, for example, the video in Battlefield Vietnam. Uh, if, if you remember, the video was very grainy. The, yeah. the sound in war tapes it gives gives the same feeling except in sound it, it had that sort of veritate sort of feel to it it was really really cool uh, the other thing i wanted to ask you was um our, like we talked about recording uh, gun sounds and various other sounds in the game one sound that freaked me out in in, in battlefield was the sound of a house collapsing uh, mm -hmm. is, is that a pure sound? How, how did the hell did you make that, that sound? I mean, because I, I, I've heard that you mix other, other sort of weirder sounds to, to, in, in, in mixes and stuff like that, but how did you do the house? Mm, there, uh, there, that's a really, really good story about the houses and uh, weird sounds being used of 
uh, yes, we use, I think we used animals in some cases, like there is a walrus in there and so on. Like uh, when you want something big to fall down, it's an old, well, not the oldest trick in the book, but it's an old trick to use an animal go saying, you know, or <laughs> as a, a lion or, or a, but a walrus is very good. It has a, it, it has the sensation of, of falling down. If you put it amongst the debris and the creepy, moany metal sound, uh, you, and you, then you can hide stuff like that in there to tell, because it's a, that's a tonal story or a tonal element, uh, 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 or a tonal narrative within that specific sound. But uh, when a house collapses, it's quite interesting because that's what one of the first implementations of where we used the camera shake from the sound engine. So we the sound designers, we have control over the camera, and I think that's uh, an extreme, extremely powerful ally to uh, the sound, is to, if you shake the camera in conjunction with the sound, it's twice the, ex it's, like it's, yeah. you see, you, you, you uh, and if you play on an Xbox, you also have the rumble, like, and if those three things are synced, and that's what we did with the house, is that when you're in the house, and it's about to collapse, we play uh, like a pre-destruction, sound we shake the camera a little bit and we rumble the rumble pad so it goes and then and then and it shakes in your hand and you know that's your cue for getting out of the house and and that's all done by yeah, the audio no other discipline was in there and yeah some effects of course falling down some degree and then you run out and then as the building collapses it's the secondary sound and then even more camera shakes from the sound and it's one of the more um, pleasurable sounds in the game it, and now that I know that it's a walrus <laughs> it totally changes my, uh, my I think my it's up. in there I'm not I'm not certain we did because we I was, I was doing some trailer for the game at the time as we were doing that so I think because I ha I know I had some animals in that project and I think we used that for the final for the final house collapse as well some of those uh, you can't you can't hear it's baked inside among sure. the debris but but now you know it's there you might be able to, you might yeah. be able to pick it out yeah it, there, there's <laughs> some there's something in that sound that that was that resonated i think with human beings i think it's not just a, a mechanical fall i think there, there's something else in there I'm, I'm i'm not surprised to hear that there were animal sounds in there i was going to ask about the shake uh, the, the, the camera shake. So we're talking about that. Mm. I, I was just watching Fault Lines, uh, the 12 minute uh, trailer uh, for BF3. The yeah. fidelity of the sound in that trailer, even though I'm listening to it on YouTube, is still amazing. I, I buy the game just to hear, hear the sound uh, track uh, for the game. W will the sound be as aggressive as it was in BFBC2? Are, are you looking for something else in BF3 that you didn't do in BFBC2? I think uh, both. Yes and no. Um, since Battlefield 3 is like the, that's the real successor to Battlefield 2, it was a, to its core a PC game, which is a difference from Battlefield Bad Company 2, which was primarily developed for consoles. And now it's the other way around. So by you know embracing a more PC-ish game, uh, where I know the PC community, a lot of them are playing in headphones, and they're they're gonna put in a lot of hours. We are gonna ship a game that's more balanced, and I would say yes, slightly less aggressive, but more correct and accurate uh, in terms of portrait of reality. And uh, we're leaving room, a, a little bit more room for for key moments, and not pressing. You know, we're not playing it on 11 at all times. I think. But we, I mean, we're still the same people. We still love how Bad Company 2 sounded, and we embrace the fact that, that that's that's that game, and now it's another game. But we we need to um, we we are we have we have a much better starting point in terms of uh, balancing because we had a long pre-production for the core of the game, like uh, the sound of the weapons and, and that. So and that's. That's being um, so. That's that's a, it's a clean, gonna sound a little bit cleaner, but we are gonna hopefully shift with uh, more aesthetical settings like war tapes and and, uh, and if some people, if you know, if you like, if you're a fan of that soundscape, you can probably push 
push those buttons in this game to make it sound like PC2 if you if you're into that. But we have we like we've started on a like we have clean sounding guitars. If you like distortion, you can put it up yourself a little bit. That's what I want to say. That's cool because I but, I love distorted guitar. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, it's still gonna be, be a war game. War game like it, it has to be aggressive. Like it's by nature a very aggressive thing. So I'm not saying that it's going to be neat and tidy. Oh no 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 no, we're way beyond that point. It's a it's a it's a super convincing sounding game, but it's a, it's more balanced and it's a little bit cleaner sounding, I would say. And that that but that's been good for us to to clean up. And then applying distortion to something that's already balanced, it's it's much, it's much easier. But in in Battlefield by Company Two. It was hard to back down because a lot of the content right. were all already pushed to the max. I don't know if that answers. No, absolutely. Yeah, I, it, it, it's it's no question from what I can see in the in the trailers already. Um, it seems like you've got a little bit more realism going uh, for you, and in, in some ways, um, you know, the the, the the soundscapes in BFPC2 almost gave me post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> you know, so I'm kind of glad I'm kind of glad you're coming back a little bit, uh, but. Um, uh, it's it's great to see that you're you're playing uh, and giving giving the uh, the, the gamer um, options. You know, you sometimes you don't feel the same way every time you play a, a, a game, and sometimes you don't you know you don't feel like you want to really crank uh, crank crank your your martial amp to uh, to eleven. All the time. <laughs> so, you know, it's and I mean, isn't that what defines a PC gamer? The PC gamer, the first thing a PC gamer does when he starts a game is going into the options menu. Exactly. Where, where, Whereas a console gamer, they put the start game. <laughs> yes, no, no, absolutely. That, we're 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 all about uh, the options. Um, one last thing, and this is a bit of a pet peeve with me. Uh, you know, in in, in classic first-person shooter games, you know, in the past, one of the critical, one of the key critical pieces of information was was always enemy location. You know, where 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 is the enemy? Where are they firing from? Usually, you know, that information you know was provided to you by by sound cues, uh, footsteps, mm -hmm. the sound of somebody falling, uh, mechanical noise, you know, from a magazine entering a, a you know, gun, gun or whatever. All these sounds gave away the position of the enemy. And as a player, uh, you could turn, you know, turn around, because, you know, you're, you're limited in, in how much you can see in a game. Uh, you, you can't see all the way around. So, lately though, uh, and I'm talking uh, maybe in the last two, three years, uh, at least, a lot of FPS games have shipped with, with certain pieces of that information missing from this from the sound information and it and it's and it's getting very tricky to spot where the enemy is usually because in the sound you know there's a gunshot there's reverb and reverb points you in the wrong direction to where the sound is coming from uh, and this is what kills me all the time is footsteps uh, the enemy players footsteps can't be heard um, and I'm not just talking about Battlefield, because in Battlefield the sound was really good, I can pinpoint gun noise, but I still couldn't hear somebody trying to knife me from behind, running up. Is that a conscious, was that a conscious decision, or are you trying to make it as realistic as you, as you can? Oh yeah, but this is, this is, uh, this has been a, uh, this is a very good question, and it's one, one of the, uh, hardest and trickiest ones to answer uh, because there are you know when you play you can feel like you want to be fairly treated and you want to have a fair chance of discovering uh, someone uh, coming up behind you and we 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 had some tricky we had some problems with that throughout the development of the footsteps finding right balance there and it, I mean there are there are occasions when where you were firing and the HDR is pushed up and um, the, the, your gun is louder than anyone's footsteps so if you're being stabbed from the back while firing we can't give you you have no excuse like because that you fired and you couldn't hear we can't play footsteps on top of weapons that would just tilt everything that we've built we have to be uh, consistent with our you know our, our ladder of amplitude so, so footsteps are not uh, louder than guns but yes it's still a game and if it's vital to the meta game that you want to be able to hear these things through everywhere we can bypass the HDR should we like to uh, I don't 
really know it's a solution and then and then there's the then there is a problem of just performance sometimes like footsteps we they're actually classified as a lesser important sound because weapons are, are still more important like if you have to choose what's more important in a war game weapons or footsteps we would have to say weapons and that's also what's happening sometimes it might be the case that they're actually not playing because of performance uh, because the 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 uh, the engine is pushing around a lot of sounds and the sounds uh, of the footsteps might be down prioritized so that might have happened in one or two cases where you feel mistreated or sneak sneaked up on and then so we also have I mean it's not not just a footstep it's a whole soldier so we've added hit sounds, you know, it's small jingling of, uh, you know, harnesses and, and kit. The kit that you're carrying also makes noise. It's, it's not just the footsteps, it's uh, the whole body of the soldier that needs to be heard. And I think the, it is a real problem in a loud game that, uh, that sometimes you want to hear the less louder sounds. So and that's uh, but that's that's how it would be in real life as well. So it's kind of part of the strategy. Like if you if you're in a loud environment and you suddenly want to hear something that's lower played back loud, it would also, as I said, tilt everything. So if you if you play the footsteps as loud as the gun, then it would say to the player in a way that oh the guns aren't that loud because they are as loud as my footsteps. No I, absolutely, I completely understand, yeah. and, and I think where I had objection was when you're in a room and there's no one firing and you still can't hear somebody coming up from behind. And or, yeah, or, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I know that that has happened. It's unfortunate, and uh, I really have no excuse for that. Uh, it's one of the, the the trickier. I think in those cases, um, the performance might be the. The problem because we we've we've tested that there is there is no problem with the amplitude we you could they are there but um, I've I've experienced the same thing during playtest that that uh, sometimes those those footsteps someone coming up from behind they it seems to not play uh, so we should um, definitely take some actions on investigating that more it's something that we we are aware of this. I hope you do because uh, I know that a lot of the PC players who are cynical by nature, <laughs> yeah. we, we tend to yeah. have that in, in our DNA. Uh, we, we, we jump to the conclusion. I know I do that, that. You know, this is some sort of plot to try to make it easier for the new player to come up, come away with knife kills. <laughs> you know? No, 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 no such thing. I mean, if if we, when we test our game, we sit a lot on test ranges and we balance everything and uh, we make sure every sound is played but then when you go in a you know in a server client environment when sounds uh, and players are it might be that if the if there's a package loss uh, during i mean on the on the server on, on the traffic between server and client there might be like the the server i'm 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 making this up because i don't know but uh, it might be that the uh, the server says that Oh, he's not here right now. He's he's one centimeter off, and then his foot plant doesn't play, and then there's no sound playing. I mean, there might be stuff like that under the hood. I I really don't know because we had no, we had really hard time um, replicating this this uh, during playtests. Right. It's just something that is reported uh, at several times. Like I've I've heard it even um, even a long way after after shipping so it's it's i know it's an issue and it's going to be addressed i hope outstanding uh Stephen, i'll take it upon myself to fantastic. address it and but, uh, but uh, for bc2 i don't i don't know if um, we have any time to put on it we are really stressed out about shipping battlefield 3 
Yeah, you have uh, you have other things on your mind, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yes. And and in fact, uh, you're on your off day uh, working, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get back to work so that you can meet those dates. I don't want to be uh, the reason for you not to. <laughs> so, <laughs> listen, I I I had an an amazing time uh, talking to you. I've learned so much, and I hope the guys listening to this cast have as well. Uh, Stephen, okay. I, I wish you the greatest success. Good luck uh, with with the new release. You know, your team is doing an amazing job. You guys are head and shoulders above uh, what I've heard out, out there in, in gaming. And keep keep it up. You guys are amazing. Yes. I also want to make sure that uh, all of the guys that I'm working with get the credit for this. It's, it's not a one-man job here. We're an amazing group of sound people. So amazing engineers on our side and, and uh, some amazing sound designers that work in here. Outstanding. Uh, so and it's, and it's, it's, a t- it's a team effort. And, and hopefully we've opened the ears yeah. of a lot of people playing your playing your game. Hopefully they'll they'll recognize that there's a lot that goes into giving them that experience. It's not just the video; it's also the audio that's uh, extremely important. And in my opinion, makes the game. Yes. Stefan Strandberg, thank you very much from Dice. I really appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. Brother Bashers, sister slashers, thanks for listening to Bash. Come to our portal site fashionslash.com for more info on gaming. Join our boards and take part in our community. And remember, please support Bash by checking out our sponsors' links or by donating to Bash today. Thanks.